Okay, in this video, I'm going to talk about struct in C++. So let's make a program. Include IO stream int main. Return zero. Okay, so that's our program. And what the struct is, is something that will hold a group of variables together. And it's useful if you want to group things together or if all the variables are somehow related. So I'm going to make an example called struct. That's the syntax. And then I'm going to call this running data. So maybe someone is running, and we have a collection of different uh, variables that describe the data. So you can have a float, average speed, and then maybe a float distance, and a float time, and a float, uh, not flat, float heart rate. So these are the variables inside our struct. So every time we create a struct called running data, it's going to have these four uh, variables inside. Okay, So we could go ahead and create an instance of a struct by saying running data k data, for example. And we could set each value inside by doing k data dot. You could say average speed equals 6. You say k data dot um, distance equals six. Let's say six miles. K data dot uh, time. Let's say sixty minutes. And then k data dot heart rate equals one sixty. Okay, so this is a long way of uh, declaring this. We could also do something like uh, running data k data. And then use the curly braces to initialize. So 6, 6, 60, and then 160. Okay, so these two should give you the same output. And if you want to extract a value from your struct, you could say int my uh, average speed, for example. You could say kdata dot average speed. And if I put a breakpoint here and run my code and debug, you will see what the my average speed is. Okay, so we see my average speed here is six, and you can also open up K data and you can see the different um, variables that's inside the struct. Okay, so other things we could do is, for example, we could pass a struct into a function or have a function return a struct. So that way. Before, when you were dealing with functions, we could only return one variable. But now, with structs, you could return more than one variables. So we're going to go ahead and create a function that does something with structs. We're going to call this return type. We have a return type of a struct. And in this case, our return type is running data. So we're going to call this function performance boost and pass in uh, running data, call this data. And inside our function, what we're going to do is just boost the performance of certain parameters. So data dot average speed, we're going to say we're going to be 1.2 times faster. Um, and then maybe your heart rate is going to be slower, which means that you're performing better. So we'll say 80% of the original heart rate. And then the time is also faster. So we can say data dot uh, time times equal, and then 0 0.8. And let's not worry about the distance. You could calculate it to see what it is. But we'll just leave it be. And we could return data. Um, in this case, we're not passing by reference. You could also pass by reference if you wanted to. But we're going to modify the data and then return a new running data uh, struct object. Okay, So we go here and run this. We're going to say running data k data um, better equals performance boost and then passing k data. So this will pass it in the function and then it will update the values. And then if I wanted to see my updated value, I could say uh, int my average speed better equals k data better dot average speed. And if I run it in debug mode again, we see that my average speed better is 7 now. Okay, So everything is working. 
So that's an example of using functions and structs. Now we can also use things like um, arrays and structs. So you could have an array of few different struct objects. So we could go ahead and create an R array. We have const int n, const int n, n data equals two. And we have running data, our array is called all data, and then pass in end data. Set that equal to, we're gonna create, we're just gonna copy these values because I want to just keep it the same. Uh, maybe here I'll just change the heart rate only. Okay, so maybe there's two sets of runner data, both did the same thing, except one had a better heart rate. So we could use this array of structs and do something. So let's say we wanted to print out. So I++ here, and then inside we'll do like std colon colon C out heart heart rate colon and then we could use our all data and then access it with the bracket i and then heart rate. So if I run this, it should print out the heart rate for the two runners. And if I run code, you see heart rate 160, heart rate 150. So that pretty much summarizes how to use struct. And if you found this video helpful, give it a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.